Shout out to the old school back in the days. Missing all the good times. Don't let them Hey, yeah. thank you for joining us. This is Ryan and Jesse. And this is news and views from the core of Regent out to beyond. News and Views is a weekly half-hour-long news program for those who want to get behind the headlines for analysis, eventually interviews, and alternative perspectives from a decidedly progressive point of view. Each week, special documentaries and discussions exploring stories internationally, regionally, and locally. As in all things Radio Regent, the program is dedicated to inclusivity, diversity, and, of course, positivity. All right, so today is uh, February 16th. February 16th. Feeling much more like a February day out there today than yesterday when it was about 15 degrees. That was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, I don't think we're going to have any more of that. We got some we got some weather to start off the show, as I think is going to maybe become the custom. Uh-huh. Um, let's see. How, how local, how hyper-local do we want our weather to be? Can we go to Billy Bishop? Let's go to Billy Bishop. Okay. Because that's probably, I mean, it's much closer than Pearson. Right. Ooh. Freezing rain warning comes up in a, a lot of red wow. right away. Okay. Um, currently, it's two degrees, sitting at two degrees. Um, some wind, 17 kilometers an hour, uh-huh. gusting up to 30. Looks, um, what about tomorrow? Is that I'm seeing a minus two there. Oh yeah. Uh, so well, I guess tonight is the uh, the freezing rain warning. Um, let's let's take a look at that first. Tonight, freezing rain with ice. Accretion. Wow, I don't often see words that I don't know, and there is one. Um, I don't know what that means. Um, of up to a few millimeters possible, and that would be tonight. A wintry mix of precipitation expected beginning this evening. Um, blah, blah, blah. Temperature still above zero. We got some wars- warnings. Freezing rain warnings are issued when rain falling in sub-zero temperatures creates ice buildup and icy surfaces. Shouldn't it just be snowing? <laughs> yeah. Weird. You know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that's tonight, and there's going to be a low of minus four, so watch out for that. Okay. Um, tomorrow looks like a high of only minus two, though, hmm. and a, you know, a small chance of flurries. Okay. However, we got uh, on the night in the nighttime, which is Friday night, minus 11. Ooh. Ouch, I got a friend coming in from Ottawa that day. Oh, no. I know. Maybe that might not be happening. Especially with all that frozen rain. Oh, dear. Okay. Um, but the day after that, it'll be a plus two with a mix of sun and cloud. This is Saturday, February 18th. Very, very sweet. And then, oh, I like that sun, sunny symbol on yeah. Saturday. Sunday, the 19th, we are at four degrees Celsius. Yeah. And then, uh, I mean, personally, I don't think, you know, divulging weather details beyond that really has a point because it'll change. Right. Especially, you know, given yesterday was what it was and these times are what they are yes yeah so that's the weather so um, that is the weather yes yeah, so the february the 15th a monumental amazing thing happened and it wasn't the weather oh what was that it was my birthday Huzzah! <laughs> two weeks exactly after mine oh cool yeah. there you go query us yeah um you singing about that at the end of the first show a little bit i'm sorry about that <laughs> it's fine <laughs> But uh, yeah, so yesterday, the 15th, very, very strange weather was my birthday. Um, But before that, on February 14th, dear Valentine's Day, um, I got to do something very different. Mm. Um, I checked out the annual strawberry ceremony, um, which is outside of 52 Division. And basically, that is all about giving a voice to um, missing and murdered Indigenous um, women. I heard peripherally about this from a friend who coincidentally was also there. I huh. wonder I wonder if you would have crossed paths, but probably not. I wonder. There was a big turnout, which is really, really good. Were there a lot of people? There were a lot of people. And, you awesome. know, it was outside of 52 Division, uh, and there were only, like, two police officers watching. Is that good or bad? Well, yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> they, they had a, a supportive, friendly vibe. Okay. And... Um, it was it was a really really you know good and and meaningful event as as it was meant to be of course. And you said it was an annual thing, which I like. I didn't even know this happened. Exactly. Let alone that it was an annual thing. Yeah, it's the 18th annual strawberry ceremony. Wow. Um, and um, basically the uh, co-founder Audrey Huntley, a co-founder of No More Silence, who is the uh, organization who basically put on this ceremony from their website they say our gathering this year comes in the wake of a massive amount of predatory violence against indigenous women girls trans and two-spirited spirited spirited people across the country including the serial murders of four women in winnipeg by a 35 year old white man rebecca contuis morgan harris mercedes myran 
and f- and a fourth woman woman rather whose remains uh, whose remains are identified but was named Buffalo Woman by the local indigenous communities. Police have stated they believe the bodies of Morgan uh, Harris Mercedes Myron could be at the Prairie Green landfill, but they are not going to do an investigation to try and excavate the remains as of yet. Uh, what they they think they know where the bodies are and they're not even going to go look. Yeah, I know. Uh, okay. They have different reasons. They say that it's like a, a logistical nightmare, but I, you know, it it sounds it sounds like racism to me. I mean, being murdered is a ni- nightmare, and yeah. having a family member murdered is a nightmare. Yeah. So like, get off your <laughs> tokuses. I still haven't asked about whether we can swear on the show, so I'll hold okay, off. Hold on off now. on for now. <laughs> get off your tokus. <laughs> um. Well, but, I mean, that's you know, like great that this is. Ha- not great that this needs to be happening, mm-hmm. but great that it is happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and you said that there was a decent number of people there as well? There are a decent amount, a couple hundred of people, certainly. Um, I was new to the ceremony, and they gave us, um, they gave everyone in attendance a, a cup of water, okay. which represented you know, water, life, um, connectivity, and then there was also the strawberry. And I have come to now learn that uh, there are plant medicines for men and women, and one of the plant medicines for women um, is a strawberry. Okay. So that's what we held and then uh, ate at the appropriate time. Hmm. And do you know, like, is this like a one-off thing? I mean, in terms of an annual cycle, like, will they have other events, um, other, you know, calls for awareness and action or things like that? Yes. No more silence, uh, dot org. Um, they will be putting on many events throughout the year, okay. but the strawberry ceremony is something that's going to be happening every year over and over and over again, which is really, really, really good. And mm-hmm. people were saying, don't be afraid to come because it's outside of 52 division. Instead, it's the idea that we are claiming that land. It is not the police officer's land at that time. Right. <laughs> Or ever really, essentially, it's yeah. our place to go and and pay our respects. Yeah, and like for I was about to say users, I don't know why for listeners who may not be aware, that's like, is that the central police station in the city, or is it one of them? I believe it's one of them because wait, what's what's fifty one division, right? Yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, I'll have to find out about that. I know that it is. It's a central station. It's a central right? station. You're it's right really about that. Significant. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. Okay. Okay. Cool. cool. <laughs> yeah, we've established that. Yeah. All right. Um. So that's a piece of I don't know, like community service type news. Not really positive news, unfortunately. Yeah. It's yeah. it's so easy to make news about bad things because bad things seem to happen a lot. And mm-hmm. um, I don't know. I guess it's like, I guess it's a good thing to keep abreast of what's going on. Yeah. You know, kind of in your community, more proximal to you, but also slightly at large, because it's a good thing to keep a, like a critical eye on yeah. what's happening you know it's like okay these are the things that are being reported on uh-huh. but like speaking also to the reality that it's you know burnout eventually you know you can only deal with so much negative news yeah but also to thinking like okay well thinking about trends not only what's happening but like what's being reported on you know like mm-hmm. news media organizations are just things run by people yeah. making decisions about you know what to air and yeah. etc um so yeah, we're going to like try to kind of expand the scope a little bit yeah. of the show. Uh, today is kind of a trial, see how it goes. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of like working in that critical analysis, hoping that, you know, listeners, not only during our show, encouraging, encouraging them to like listen to us critically, mm-hmm. um, but also like you know, when you're engaging with Nunes Media on your own, even talking to friends about, you know, things that they've heard, mm-hmm. using social media, whatever, you know, not just looking at whatever headlines and thinking, oh, you know, this happened, but like, mm-hmm. you know, kind of, Kind of you're forming your own views about the news as you listen to news <laughs> and views. Har har. Uh, I think that's a really, really good point that you brought up, Jesse, because, you know, nowadays with our smartphones, our tablets, our this is, our that's, um, there's so many. I love how old we are. Sorry. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I'm, you know, there's there's news sources all over the place. And uh, it's, it's not a great idea to just look at one I'm learning because mm-hmm. that one source could be wrong or ill-informed. Yeah. So... To quote the uh, Agent Orange, uh-huh. fake news. <laughs> right. As they say. Agent Orange, As they say. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, so let's, you know, before we get into some of that more grotesque stuff, yeah. we have a couple more, um, I don't want to say light, because honestly, they aren't, yeah. but less bad 
yeah. things to talk about. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Of course. <laughs> we are still, uh, well, we're mid-February, so we're still in Black History Month. And um, lots going on in Toronto. I wanted to uh, originally report on um, uh, a Black History uh, Festival down at the harbor front called Kumba, oh. which is really cool. It's got poetry, uh, free screenings, but... Unfortunately, that has ended. That oh. was from, yeah, February 3rd to the 11th. I just see this. Oh, no. <laughs> Speaking of checking your sources, double, double, or more than once, rather. Yeah. Um, and so in, in, in looking at that, I realized that, unfortunately, the Kumba Festival is over, but it will be on next year. But the Toronto Black Film Festival is back. It was created in 2013. Tickets and passes are available at torontoblackfilm.com. Toronto Black Film Festival uh, is full of stories, discussions, and I got to say, because I, I, I come from acting, it is a place where we can see diverse actors in leading roles. Wow. Not roles that are all one type of role. Yeah. So uh, Toronto Black Film Festival is super cool and a great way to see what's going on in the arts community in Canada. Awesome. Um, I kind of spaced out because I was doing something at the same time you were talking there, no problem. Um, where can one go to engage in the content of the Black Film Festival? The, Is it, I'm assuming it's multi-site, probably. It's, it's multi-site, yeah. You're going to find out all your um, information about where the online and in-person events are at torontoblackfilm.com. Okay. Can we, uh, let's see here, take a look. It's a film festival that is really, really um, needed, yeah. and people really championed this to be happening. So it's it's a really exciting thing. Um, I'm just looking here on their website about getting involved. They've got a schedule information page, of course. So it looks like the festival is happening all over the place at Isabel Theater, the uh, Pog uh, Monahu Pub and Kitchen. We got an event at the Daniel Spectrum, right where we're broadcasting out of. Wow, cool. Carlton Cinema. So they are uh, have expanded all over the city. Yeah, so it sounds like your best bet is to get on the website and see what's available, what's you know near you and accessible mm -hmm. to you, and kind of go from there, right? Exactly. Well cool. said. Awesome. Um, yes, yes. You know, it's funny. My, my dad, he loves movies, but he gets overwhelmed with schedules and stuff. Oh. Yeah, like, <laughs> he'll be like, oh, that's really interesting. But then he'll be like, I'm so overwhelmed. I just don't know what to pick. So he doesn't go at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I guess it's hard when there's a lot of things that you're like, I really want to go to all these, and especially if they're conflicting times yeah. or you know, not so proximal locations. It's like, how can I do it? And then you know, I'm assuming that you have other things in your life that eat up your mental spoons or mana or whatever. Yeah, it's like, oh, I just, I just can't deal, and if nobody can help me, it just doesn't end up happening. Yeah, right? I, I very much know what that's all about. Okay, okay, you get it, you get it. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Uh, was there anything else in the? Black History Month file that we wanted to touch on before moving on. I guess the well, the festival's over. That was news to me. I yeah. just found that out like when when y'all heard it just yeah. now. <laughs> just uh, to mention that on the city website, there's more Black History Month activities, and ninety percent of them are free. Ooh, so like that... the Toronto City website, I'm assuming. Yes, that's correct. Awesome. Um, we spoke a little bit about that last show, and for the oh, next did, show did. upcoming, um, I'll highlight a little bit more uh, cool Black History Month activities. Awesome. So good to look into that. Sweet. Um, and mm -hmm. oh, there's been a lot of, you know, a lot of heavy news. And it's winter, and we're dealing with the February blahs. But I found a, a very positive news story, uh, which is coming out of Montreal. And basically, we have a gentleman called Corey uh, Fleischer, and he created a grassroots uh event in essence or a company that um removes graffiti and hate from various walls all around montreal um it's actually turned into a global movement and uh what are you reading over there jesse um well, i'm not trying to read anything i'm trying okay. to get the internet to work for me but it okay. isn't i was trying to just to play a clip of one of his videos because it seems oh. like he's quite active on the social medias right and um like, I love this kind of approach where you kind of, I, I'm sure there's a combination of words to explain, but like, I'm going to do it in a more cumbersome manner. Uh -huh. He's kind of playing with like stereotypes, I guess, in a bit, in a way, you <laughs> know, because, so you see this guy, you know, somebody who's like literally erasing hate and, you know, you expect to see some kind of like, you know, I'm going to use pretty 
Uh-huh. I'm going to use language that people that are not in this camp would, you know, stereotypically use. Somebody who's like kind of hippy dippy or yeah, flighty yeah. or you know whatever. This guy looks like he would be a cop. <laughs> you know, he's like a like he's like a light skinned person with a shaved head, wearing aviator glasses, wearing all black clothing, is fairly buff, and he's carrying this like. I mean, it looks like a gun. It's not yeah. because it's a power washer. And he's armed with a erase hate vest, which looks like a like a bulletproof vest. Yeah, it looks very much like that. And he's, you know, in this clip of this video, he's pointing his fingers towards the camera and it's kind of like shaped like a gun. <laughs> and um, I mean, says he drives throughout Montreal, eliminating racist, homophobic and anti-Semitic. Um, that was still going. <laughs> anti uh, uh, anti-Semitic uh, and Islamophobic graffiti. Yeah, so this is like an example. I mean, besides the image of you know how he's presenting himself, he also talks in a way that is kind of like you know perfect to kind of complete that image. That is cool. I wish we had him in Toronto. Oh, hold on, hold on. Bump that up for me, would you? Oh, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> All right. It's hard. It's hard to do things when you reach over. Here we go. What's going on, guys? We're racing game coming to your life from a skate park. We got a swastika, and you know that hate has no home here. Let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah. There it goes. There it goes. This is the vibe. <laughs> that is cool. Oh, <laughs> and he throws the you power washer. You know we don't hate around the kids. Hate has no home here, and until the next time, we love you. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I, I feel like that's the kind of brilliant marketing that's going to get attention hopefully mm-hmm. and is going to get people looking at this and also you know just like is enjoyable to watch as well mm-hmm. right it's like yeah it's dealing with a heavy subject matter mm-hmm. in a very appropriately responding way mm-hmm. but i don't feel horrible engaging with it right yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. yeah this is what we should all be emulating this is the kind of thing totally and you know jesse i was commenting a little bit before that like here we are in 2023 wow you know the world is is a, is a more open place yeah, but it's also experienced a lot, experiencing a lot of racism, uh, a lot of anti-Semitism, sexism, all the isms, the yeah. intersectionality, all that stuff. We're getting, you know, it's not great, and it gets a voice on the internet mm. as well as on the sidewalk. So that's yeah. that's an issue. It's upsetting. Yeah, there was a video or a clip. I think that that same, uh, that same. I already forgot the name. Oh my god. What was what was the what was that fellow's name? Uh we've got our erasing hate. Elijah something? Yes. Right? Yes, yes. Hold on, hold on. We're getting used to this here. Uh his name is Corey Fleischer. Wow, where did I get Elijah from? No worries. Um, on his Instagram, um, he had these videos of like somebody had spray painted Kanye is right in a New York subway entrance. And I think he went back, like he photographed that, and then he went back and photographed that somebody else had covered over it. Okay. So, you know, just other other people trying to do the right thing and yeah. like with similar approaches, and that's you know, it's kind of cool yeah. that that's happening. That is very cool. Yeah. Um, sweet. Well, that's. Uh, I I think that it would be good to highlight some good news. Obviously, you know, we need to remember yeah. that there's there's good things going on in the world. Yeah. Um, and as much as we've we've been talking a lot on the last shows about. You know, Toronto, the TTC and the violence and the homelessness, at least out of all of this, social awareness seems to be happening, right? We're having discussions yeah. um, about about these types of things, and that's a positive, I think. Yeah, like, it's it's a eternal striving for balance, right? Like, right. there's always going to be people doing stuff that other people don't like because it's bad objectively as a human species, and then right. it's, it's everyone else's job to kind of Hold, hold them accountable and take them to task and uh-huh. try to boot them out of wherever they may be if it's a position of power. Right. And uh, speaking of which, wow. I've been reading a little bit about this. Actually, a lot about what's been going on with our Toronto ex, almost ex-mayor. Yep. It'll be ex as of tomorrow, right? Yes. This, this all happened in between our last show. And I think it was last week. It was last Friday. Yeah. So in, in a matter of a week, John Tory will be stepping down. Right. Oh, it's from been a l- being mayor after admitting to why he's doing this right and and since since uh you know this all went down the news has really been going up and down and back and forth like Mm. you know some a a lot of people want him to stay and suggested that so it seems yeah yeah. um or or at least like at least like not quit outright and uh, to be fair some of these people are kind of people in his like circle right yes right well they're like oh my god if the mayor leaves it'll be a catastrophe Uh. 
Well, he stuck around for that budget meeting yesterday. Yeah, and how did that go? That, <laughs> I was watching the news about that last night. It was hard to watch. He didn't really get to speak because people were <laughs> protesting, you know. Uh, um, that was that was kind of awkward to watch. They, they, they pulled a young woman out there by her hands and feet. Oh, my God. Yeah, some people were very, very... Uh, emotional and upset wow and i think a lot of it comes back to where where the heck is this money going you know mm. oh they were all the uh, all the outbursts were of the budgeting not necessarily of his conduct you know i'd say they're all like 50 50 okay you know okay yeah <laughs> and then and then it was all kind of muddled together in fact as well huh you know right. um so so it's official eh? he's out on friday I guess so. And also just seeing here um, mm -hmm. that, you know, I had been under the impression that he had, I mean, obviously somebody outed him, right? Nobody ever comes clean about these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we actually discreetly said, but what happened is that he has had an extramarital affair with a member of his staff. Um, and apparently it's, this is weird to me that you can be like a terrible mayor and do like a horrible job of your job. Mm -hmm. And you continue to be there and like people vote you back in. But when you do something that's like, <laughs> related to your personal life that is kind of unaccepted socially, then you're like, oh, I have to leave now. Yeah. Not that, like, not that that shouldn't be the case. Right, right. But why has he been able to be around as a, as a garbage mayor for so long? Yeah. And this is the thing that's, like, finally getting him out. But I digress. Um, it was a Toronto star that apparently cracked the story that he had en engaged in this affair. Okay. Um, as of, actually, I think this is, this is even yesterday. He, I think he just announced last night, uh -huh. like, I think the stories were breaking around midnight or 1 a.m. So technically today, um, that he actually would be leaving tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So this is all this is all quite fresh. Mm -hmm. um, His but, friend Doug Ford. Oh God. Does not champion the fact that uh, you know Tory is leaving. He sure doesn't, <laughs> or he sure isn't rather. Right. He was quoted as saying Toronto would be toast if they elected a lefty mayor. Uh, so you are the premier of the province. <laughs> Shut up. Mind your own business. Like, like nobody asked you. Maybe maybe somebody did, but, like, have some tact for Christ's sake. Like, don't, uh. Well, just, I don't just looking at him, I'm like, man, uh, like, your face. That's a very unprofessional thing for me to say. But there's many things I don't like about him besides his face. Yeah, I, do that. <laughs> I don't like anything about him. <laughs> oh, dear. It seems like, you know, in terms of the politicians that, like, People are friends with friends and certain people are massaging other relationships and everyone's sort of connected in some strange way. Yeah. Is... I mean, that's nothing new, right? right? Like the wealthy help the wealthy and the powerful help the powerful. Well said. Um, you were just saying something about the um, the budget meeting last night. Though, yes. And I thought I had seen somewhere that there was an approval of a tax increase. Am Ouch. I remembering that correctly? I read that as well. Um, can we find some more... Because that makes I'm interested in that because you know here, let's uh, let's kind of on the on the vein of like oh, being critical said. about our news, yeah. we're going to call out the sources that we're using right now. This is CP24, yeah. um, saying that Ford has been uh, praising Tory's tenure as mayor, saying highlighting his great job on doing things like building transit, <laughs> uh, <laughs> keeping taxes low. <laughs> Apparently not. Um, not that that's a bad thing. Taxes right. should be commensurate to like you know the needs of the city and citizenry. Uh -huh. um, but you know that's typical like like conservative outlook is taxes are low. Right. And that. So it says council <laughs> adopted the five point five percent property tax hike. Um, oh, that one. Okay, right. I remember back at election time there yeah. were all these pr like matters on the table, and that was actually one that I was not super in favor of. Hmm. And it's like. You know, it's hard enough to get a home in the city at this point. Yeah, I know. Like, if you're if you're somebody who just managed to like scrape enough by to buy a home, yeah, now you have to pay more on property taxes. That sucks. Oh, of course. Like, why are they not taxing people who have like secondary or tertiary or quaternary properties or you know foreign investment owners and things like this? I love words, and you just said tertiary and quaternary. Quaternary. Quadrinary. I yeah. like it. Cool. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I had to pipe in there. Okay, it's all right. <laughs> I, I appreciate an appreciator of uh, a quality lexicon. Cool. Um, but yeah, it's like, I mean, I don't know. Maybe this is something for next time. Mm -hmm. um, but like, which taxes are increasing? You know, which things are passing? This is important. It's true. It's just like, oh, well, it's going to cost. Taxes are going up. And, yeah. you know, this is like a red flag for, oh, that's bad. And yeah. whatever. And maybe if there's a lefty bear, maybe there'll be more taxes. Right, right. Let's dig into that a little bit more next show. Yeah. We?
Um, I got to bounce back to one little thing. Ford, how dare he? He's going on about the green belt, right? And like expanding property and building out there. And then he said on the news, he said, well, Toronto needs more houses. So we're going to develop them in the green belt. Mm -hmm. And I just found that really like, uh, like obtuse. Okay, there's a word. Yeah. Uh, did I use that correctly? Yeah. <laughs> um, but tell me more. <laughs> tell you more. I just, I just feel like he's really good at diverting issues uh, and, and, and distraction mm -hmm. because the new homes in the green belt probably aren't going to be helping the people who are downtown and don't have a home. Hey, for green example. belt is not close to the city. Right. It's far. So right? like it, it's out there. I mean, pretty sure it's beyond the limits of the actual city. Maybe it's like, I so. Like you, I'm an, I'm an old fart. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, excuse me. Yeah. I'm kidding. Is North York part of Toronto or is it its own city still? Okay. Because I don't know. I'm so lost because we became the mega city when I was a teenager, right? Yeah. I Like, I remember when Etobicoke was not Toronto and stuff. Okay. Um, hmm. I always. I know it is now. Right. Like, right and it has right. been since like 96 or 97 yeah. or whatever. But I remember a time when Etobicoke was a different city uh -huh. and then they merged. But like, what is North York? Is North York part of Toronto or is it still its own city? That's a good question. <laughs> anyway, I'm pretty sure the Greenbelt is like beyond North York mm -hmm. or at least, you know, on the fringes. Mm -hmm. And if you're, as you were saying, a person like in the city, maybe you don't have a home and you're mm -hmm. living downtown because that's like a place you can find shelter and like, God, exhaust vents for warmth and stuff. <laughs> like you're not going to be going all the way out there. And also like why, if this is his solution to like unhoused people, mm -hmm. how is he going to house them? They're right. not just going to magically get there. Right. And if he's going to take them there, why doesn't he tell us about that? <laughs> well, that's that's the part you miss because they're going to be building a brand new Metrolinx train line from the Green Belt all the way to downtown Toronto. Oh, just are you kidding. serious? No, I'm oh, kidding. I'm okay. making that up. <laughs> but, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> let's, let's wait a few years until they announce that one. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, one other quick little news bit I wanted to speak about, Jesse. Please. Um, okay. The TTC is going crazy about fines right now um is i just it? yeah talking to a friend of mine who who you know they you might think that they don't have a, a presence but they're around and they are checking people's uh to make sure that they've paid it's now fair inspectors fair inspectors if you uh made a fair violation and didn't pay on the ttc it's going to cost you 425 dollars. that's the fine that's more than it was a few months ago crazy well, I, and get this: if you, uh, for a first-time offender on the Go train, the fine is thirty-five dollars only. So that's a little interesting. What I know, it's a thirteen-fold increase. Right, right. Um, for something that generally has a much lower fare. Mm hmm. Interesting, eh? Wow. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, what that makes me think of is that something that we were looking at mm -hmm. uh, in advance of today's show. Mm -hmm. Was that you know we were talking last time about the increase in the police presence on the TTC in order to quote unquote gratuitous air quotations for y'all on the cameras uh -huh. solve the problem of the violent attacks which have not stopped there was one yesterday there was one the day before totally some of these at stations that are very close to us or are our stations yeah um but a letter from, well I don't know if it's a letter a report from CTV News um I guess from the city. Uh -huh says that the Toronto police cannot afford the monthly cost staff overtime officers on transit past March. Hmm. And actually the other day I did see two, you know, two blue suits mm -hmm. show up on the subway. That okay. was the first time I've seen them. You know, they were just riding, right. looking tough with okay. their guns and all that. Whoa. Um, but that's interesting given how they now have like $48 million that they didn't have before. Right. right? Like <laughs> where's this, how much, how much do they pay them? Yeah. Where's this money going? If yeah. not to them. Right. How can this only be funded another month? Not that I think it should be like what they're doing whatsoever. Right. But like, well, I mean, here's a here's a city council video. We could probably just have a show where that plays, but that's right. not going to be today. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah, like this is apparently it's going to cost one point five million a month to keep doing this. Crazy. How many have they sent out? How many are they paying them? Uh. Or how much rather? And it's hard to know. Uh, it's hard to know apparently where to put the police. They are, yeah. I, I heard that on the news uh, last night that they are putting the police in areas where they get their most uh, calls from citizens, mm. like warning calls and stuff like that. But I don't see how this can really be sustainable, like forever. Like, come on, man. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, clearly it isn't, at least financially, unless right. we want to put more money to the police. And, you know, is, right. is this what they're trying to do? Are they trying to say, hey, if you want to keep the cops on the TTC, right. the police need even more millions of dollars, even though lots of citizens already don't think this is the answer. 
What about in New York City in the 80s? Um, they had this vigilante justice group, okay? Whoa. I can't remember the name, maybe the Red Berets or something. But what they were were citizens who were basically community on the community lookout in the on the on the subways. Wow. And it actually worked. Huh. Um there were men and women and they appeared to be quite tough. Okay. <laughs> so that probably helped, but I don't know. I don't see Torontonians rallying together and doing that. So yeah, much. and as much as I love vigilante justice, then you get uh, into the whole other gray area of like when did they just start exercising, you know, their own authority and right. start like harassing citizens and <laughs> yeah. There's, yeah. there's no easy answer, right? Like it's the same with engaging with news media. It's like True. the golden mean it's somewhere in the middle. It's not let the police do everything, yeah. not let citizens do everything. It's build a better city. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> what a concept. <laughs> uh, what a concept. Shoot. Um, we are at 5.06, my friend. We are. So I think it's about time to uh, conclude the show. We did start a couple minutes late, but we okay. also run a couple minutes over time. Okay. True. So, um, the golden mean, again. <laughs> <laughs> Aristotle was right about something for once. <laughs> no, he's terrible. Sorry. So um, I'm kind of liking this analytical internet lens that we're using during the show. Yeah. So that's cool. I mean, the show is probably going to, uh, as 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 you may know, if you were listening to the first episode of this revival of News and Views two weeks ago, um, it is indeed a revival. And we're kind of still finding our footing and getting things going. So we're going to have like probably content and assistance probably from even next week that we didn't have to this point. So cool. this like, you know, this is uh, this is a work in progress. It's a, it's a living living thing yes. and um we're glad that y'all are here for the ride and hope you enjoy it as much as we are of course and uh i don't know maybe we shouldn't say too much about the changes maybe we should keep it a surprise let's keep it a surprise surprises are good yeah when they are anyway <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well thank you for listening again this week to news and views this has been jesse and ryan and we will catch you again next week at the same time 4 30 on regent no not regent park what is the official name of the station regent Park Radio, oh, Regent Radio. Not Radio Regent? Radio Regent, forgive me. Radio Regent, that it's, is the official name. It's behind me. Radio Regent, it's Radio Regent. Okay, okay, This cool. has been News and Views. Thank you very much for tuning in. Have a solid week. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay beautiful. Peace. Back in the day, when the good times, Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out all of our social media platforms. For more information, check out our website.